welcome from the Shrine Auditorium, the site of the 72nd Annual Academy Awards. Hi, I'm Meredith Vieira, and in just 48 hours, this red carpet will be wall-to-wall -wall glitter and glamour. As host of the Oscar pre-show, I've been out here all day nervously rehearsing. But boy, that was no rehearsal last night, when Who Wants to Be a Millionaire proved as gripping as any Hollywood cliffhanger. We sat on the edge of our seats as Joe Trela, just a regular Joe, became the youngest quiz show contestant ever to win $1 million. But right now, Regis Philbin is ready to present 10 fresh faces who are sitting on the edge of their seats, waiting to make their debuts. As we send you from here in L.A. back to New York to play a special Academy Awards edition of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? everybody and welcome to a special edition of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Now, frankly, we're all still getting over the amazing events of last night, but we are so honored that Oscar is joining us for tonight's program devoted to movie trivia. And doesn't he look just wonderful there? Now, if you love watching the Academy Awards, you're going to love this show. Behind me are 10 contestants who called our 800 number and played a special qualifying round to get here tonight. They are fanatics about films. So this show isn't going to be about the easy stuff. We're sure these folks know that Gwyneth Paltrow won for Shakespeare in Love last year, and they know Casablanca was the best movie of the year in 1943, or else they wouldn't be here. So our theater is packed and buzzing with anticipation, just like the real Oscars. There'll be winners, there'll be losers, there'll be drama and excitement. But now, let's meet the 10 contestants who are simply happy to be nominated. And they are Roy Smith, Norman, Oklahoma. Michael Wolstadt, Forest Hills, New York. Chris Hermanin, Las Vegas, Nevada. Alan Olson, Bel Verdon, Pennsylvania. Jeff Cook, Beverly Hills, California. Tom Duffy, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. John Cutrell, Mayfield, Kentucky. Brian Donahue, Long Branch, New Jersey. Mark Ryder, San Francisco, California. Jane Garcia, Los Angeles, California. All right, contestants, here's how it works. In a moment, a question and four answers will appear on your screens. The one who puts those answers in the correct order in the fastest time will be our next player. Audience, we need complete silence here. Thank you. Here comes the question. Rank these 1999 films according to U.S. box office totals, starting with the biggest moneymaker. The Blair Witch Project. Never Been Kissed, The Matrix, American Pie. Okay, time's up. Let's see the answer in the correct order, starting with the biggest moneymaker, and it was The Matrix, Blair Witch Project, American Pie, and finally, Never Been Kissed. That's the right order. Let's see who did it in the fastest time. John <laughs> From Mayfield, Kentucky, 29 years old, actually is a sports writer, huh? That's right. So for past five, past five years for the Paducah Sun. Paducah Sun? Yes. Yeah. So is Mayfield near Paducah? Uh, it's about 20 miles south. But you grew up in Mayfield? Yes. And All how right. many movie theaters are there in Mayfield? Uh, just one, the Plaza Cinema had two screens. And you must have gone all of your life? Well, except for the four-year period it was closed, but yeah, pretty much all my life were there. Wow. And also drive-in theaters as well. Especially drive-ins. I took a trip last summer. I went to seven drive-ins in seven days. Wow. And here you are, going for Oscar. All yeah. right, so uh, what do you say? You ready to play here? Absolutely. Good All right, John. Well, good luck to you. You know the rules. You're 15 questions away from winning $1 million. Here's how we play. The more questions you get right, the more money you win. Once you reach the $1,000 or the $32,000 level, you're guaranteed to leave here with at least that much money. And to help you win as much as possible, you have three lifelines to help you. 50-50, ask the audience. Finally, of course, you can phone a friend anywhere in the country. 
So if you're ready to play, John, let's do it. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Here we go. Okay. For $100, take a look at this one. What profession did Annette Benning's character have in the Oscar-nominated movie, American Beauty? Advertising executive? Real estate agent? Teacher? Stockbroker? Saw this movie, remember her spreading over the house? Uh, she was a real estate agent, let her be. Final answer? That is my final answer. Yeah, she was a real estate agent, you're right. Incidentally, uh, this is your pick to uh, win a lot of awards. Oh, yeah. Great movie. Darkly funny. You'll, you'll laugh and you're shocked. It's the best one of the year. All right. Here it is for $200. What performer has hosted more Academy Award presentations than anyone else? Bob Hope. Billy Crystal. Johnny Carson. Jerry Lewis. Hmm. Okay. Uh... I think I saw an internet quiz and mentioned uh, posted shows. Uh, and I think this will be number seven for Billy, so I'm going to say B, Billy Crystal. You want to make that your final answer? That is my final answer. No, oh, no, John, no. It was Bob Hope. John, back That's to right. Mayfield, I guess. I don't yeah. know. Oh, well. All right, old buddy. Well. Thank you for coming here. And Have a blast anyway, Rudis. I'm sorry, John. Yeah, Bob Hulk, all those years. Okay. There you go, buddy. Ah, too bad, huh? Too bad. Bob Hope hosted ten times and co-hosted six. Billy Crystal hosted six times, and this Sunday will be his seventh. But we still have nine more contestants ready to go. So here's the next fastest finger question. Put these Oscar categories in the order they were presented last year, starting with the first. Supporting actress, directing, foreign film, original song. Okay, everybody, time's up. Let's see the answer in the correct order, starting with the first. Supporting actress, then foreign film, original song, Finally, directing. That's the right order. Let's see who got it right in the fastest time. Roy Schmidt! <laughs> Roy Schmidt, University of Oklahoma. He wants to win a million dollars. We'll be right back. He's a graduate student at the University of uh, Oklahoma, wife Sachi, right behind him there. He's a uh, Japanese teacher. Nice to have you here, Sachi. And Roy, uh, you spent some time in Japan. As a matter of fact, your, your mom was Japanese, didn't you? Yes, that's true. She came from northern Japan mm -hmm. uh, in the 50s, and I went 15 years uh, before coming to the University of Oklahoma. Uh -huh. And you speak Japanese? Yes, I do. Can you say to me in Japanese, is that your final answer? Sono kotae de iriska. Uh-huh. Good for you. <laughs> All right, so tell us a little more about yourself. How often do you go to the movies? Uh, Sachi and I try to go about once a week, if possible. Um, there's always something out we want to see, so. Mm -hmm. And we rent videos often. And you're really a movie buff. I try to be. Hopefully I will be for this. All right, good for you. Well, you know the rules, Roy. You know about uh, the lifeline, 50-50. Ask the audience, own a friend, it's all here for you. So if you're ready, let's do it. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? <laughs> Roy, for $100, here it comes. What actor plays himself in the Oscar-nominated film about people who find a way to enter his brain? Harvey Keitel. John Cusack. John Malkovich. Wesley Snipes. Uh, from being John Malkovich, the answer is John Malkovich. Yes, it was John Malkovich. You're right for $100. $200. Which of these 70s movies made men's shirts and ties part of a fashionable woman's wardrobe? Annie Hall, The Sting, Cabaret, All That Jazz. I have an idea, 
here, but I really don't want to get out. Um, so, anyway, so I'd like to ask the audience. To sure, we can ask the audience. Roy needs a little help here, audience. Using your keypad, A, B, C, or D, please vote now. Sixty-one percent feel it's uh, Andy Hall, and uh, uh, twenty-four percent went with Capra Ray. Well, I was thinking Andy Hall myself, so uh, I like to go with Andy. Andy Hall. Final answer? Yes. Final answer, Andy Hall. Final answer is the right answer. It was Andy Hall. Two hundred dollars. All right, Roy, for three hundred dollars. What was the only entirely animated film to receive an Oscar nomination for Best Picture? The Lion King. Fantasia, Beauty and the Beast, an American Tale. I'm pretty sure about this one, it's C, Beauty and the Beast. Right on, Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> For $500. On February 15, 2000, what actor officially announced the nominees for the 1999 Academy Awards? Nathan Lane, Dustin Hoffman, Denzel Washington, Tommy Lee Jones. I, I watched this on TV and I, I, I'm really sure it's the Dustin Hoffman. With Dustin Hoffman, you got $500. Here we go for $1,000. In the Big Chill, what college did the group of seven friends graduate from? Indiana University. Uni uh, University of Michigan. University of Wisconsin, Georgetown. I saw this movie a long time ago. Sure. I hate to use another lifeline so soon, but I think I'll call a friend. Who do you want to call, Roy? Um, Robert Freela. And who is he? He's a good friend from University of Kansas when I was undergraduate. All right, fine. Let's call Robert. AT&T will get him on the line, see if he can help you. Hello, Robert. Yes? Yeah, Regis Philbin here from ABC's Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Hello, Mr. Philbin. How you doing? Good, how are you? I'm here with Roy. He needs some help. Okay. I know you my can't, best. can't see him right now, but he's one five over to going for a thousand, hung up on a question. He'll give you that question and the four possible answers in a moment, okay? Okay. All right, Roy, you got 30 seconds and they start right now. Rob, in the big chill, what college did the group of seven friends graduate from? Indiana University, University of Michigan, University of Wisconsin, Georgetown. Indiana. Pretty Say sure? Four again. You really sure? No, don't Say the four again. Either. Oh, Indiana, Michigan, Wisconsin, Georgetown. Gosh, Roy, I don't know. I... Okay, sure. thanks, Rob. Roy, Roy, Roy. What are we going to do now? Two lifelines gone, you got 50-50 if you want to narrow it down. Uh, I'm going to have to use 50-50. Let's do it. Computer, please take away two of the wrong answers, leaving Roy one wrong answer and the correct answer. You of Michigan, you of Wisconsin. University of Michigan, B. Final answer? Yes. He says Michigan. Got it for $1,000. <laughs> so, he's won a for all the lifelines to go. Let's see how he does. This uh, movie trivia is uh, proving to be uh, quite formidable. You have lost all your lifelines, Roy, but you're up to a thousand. You can't leave here with less than that. Uh, and uh, it's it's a struggle, isn't it? Uh, but Roy, good. your back's against the wall, and you're going to make a comeback, right? I hope so. Sachi, right behind you there, smiling. Sachi makes Roy do funny things at parties. <laughs> like, like what, Sachi? Um, he can. Do the impression of Barney from The Simpsons really well? He can do Barney? Yes. Ooh, Roy. And he can Quit even... Barney, Roy. Yeah. What kind of pathetic drunk do you think I am?
Can't we, uh, can't we give Roy a couple of bucks for that? <laughs> so here's where you stand, Roy. Lifeline's gone. $1,000. Going for $2,000. We can do it, Roy. Ten away from a million. Here it is for $2,000. Let's play. For $2,000, Lizzie Gardner, who wore a dress made of American Express gold cards, won an Oscar in what category? Costume design, art direction, visual effects, live action short, made of American Express gold cards. I believe the answer is A, costume design. Costume design, final answer? Yes. Final answer, right answer, you got it for <laughs> That's right, Roy, we aggressively attack these questions. <laughs> You've won 2,000, going for 4,000, here it is. Which of the following actors has never repeated a role in a movie sequel? Was it Charlie Sheen, Christina Ricci, Gene Hackman, Julia Roberts? Never repeated a role in a movie sequel. No, Charlie Sheen was in Hot Shot one and two. Um, I believe Christina Ricci played in both of the uh, Adam Family movies. All right. Gene Hackman was Lex Luthor in all Superman. The D. Julia Roberts. D. Julia Roberts. Final answer. Final answer. Julia Roberts it is. All right, Roy, settling down nicely here. Eight away from a million. Going for $8,000 right now. The real-life tale of a shark attack on the crew of what ship is told by Quint in the movie Jaws? USS Dorchester. USS Indianapolis. USS San Diego. USS New Mexico. I've seen this movie a lot of times. I just, it's not coming to mind. The real life tale of a shark attack on the crew of what ship is told by Quint? $4,000. Yeah, I'm thinking about that. You know, you're still in college, bro. Yeah, that would pay off a lot of money. But Roy, you may never be sitting here with me again. I probably won't ever be. <laughs> Actually, um, it's my birthday today, so I think I'm going to go home with a $4,000 birthday All right, okay. Roy's 28 years old today, and that would be a nice birthday present for you. But I tell you what, just for the fun of it, let me see if the Indianapolis is the right uh, choice, and it was the right choice for $8,000. $4,000, Roy, come on. That's not bad. Good luck to you. It's nice meeting you. Right out there. This is really great. Maybe all of our contestants will get a chance to play. Let's take a look at the next fastest thing to question. Here it comes. Put these movies in geographical order according to where their finale took place, starting in the east. Con Air, North by Northwest. Midnight Run, Sleepless in Seattle. Okay, everybody, time's up. Let's see the answer in the correct order, starting in the east. Sleepless in Seattle. North by Northwest. Con Air. Midnight Run, that's the order. Let's see who did it in the right order. There, time's up. Good luck, Tom. That's terrific. Tom Duffy, he wants to win a million. He'll be right back.
Jersey, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 26 years old, works as a consultant in the information technology business. That's correct. Good for you. And your fiance, Carrie, standing, uh, sitting right there behind you. you Everybody me? dressed in blue tonight. How'd you meet Carrie? Uh, Carrie and I met in college. Uh, we went to Lehigh University, and we had the same work-study job. So uh, we met sophomore year, and it took me until senior year to get up the courage to ask her out. No and kidding. It's been great ever since. You asked her out, and then how long did you go out before you asked her to marry you? Uh, four years. Almost you don't make day. quick decisions, do you? <laughs> We're going to be here a while, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good enough for us. Big movie fan? Nah, not too bad, not too bad. Tell me you're a big movie fan. I'm a huge. <laughs> I'm winning the million, Regis. That's All right, big. good for you. All right, Tom, well, you know the rules by now, right? The lifeline, 50-50, ask the audience, phone a friend, it's all here for you. So if you're ready, Tom Duffy, let's do it. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? <laughs> here it is, Tom, for $100. In the movie The Graduate, what industry is Benjamin Braddock advised he should work in? Oil, computers, plastics, automotive. C, plastics. That's what they told him to get into, plastics. $100. For $200, take a look. In the Oscar-nominated film The Green Mile, who is Mr. Jingle? Pet mouse, prison guard, electric chair, clown. With all the planning for the wedding coming up, you haven't had a chance to go out and see this movie yet. So I don't know the answer to this one. I'm hoping since like a billion people have seen this, that someone in the audience has, so why don't we ask them? Well, we'll ask the audience then, <laughs> sure. Tom needs your help here, audience. On your keypad, using A, B, C, or D, Please vote now. Well, between the mouse and the electric chair, it looks like here. Mm. Mouse way ahead with 68%, chair came mm. in with 21. I thought there was a mouse involved somewhere in the plot of that movie, so I was kind of thinking that anyways, but I wanted to be sure. So, hope you're right, everyone. Let's go with A, head mouse. Final answer? Sure. Yes, it was the pet mouse, $300. $300. In the 1987 movie, Stand and Deliver, what academic subject is the focus of the film? Calculus, art, music, anatomy. Hmm. I've seen this film. And if I remember correctly, it was A, calculus. Final answer? Yes. <laughs> the right answer, he's got it. <laughs> it was advanced placement calculus, to be exact. Right. We're going for $500. Here it is. Meryl Streep received her first Academy Award nomination for her work in what film? Kramer versus Kramer, The Deer Hunter, Sophie's Choice, Silkwood. She received her nomination, her first nomination. She was in all these movies. First one to come out was The Deer Hunter. And I think she was nominated in a supporting role for The Deer Hunter. So that's my final answer, B. He says, Deer Hunter. He's right for five hundred dollars. <laughs> We're up to a thousand dollars. Here it is. Which of the following actresses won the Best Actress Oscar two years in a row? Linda Jackson, Olivia De Havilland, Betty Davis, Catherine Hepburn. Two years in a row. I think it was... Sure. Catherine Hepburn's won four. That's actress Oscar. Um, I think she won in 67 and 68. So 
so I'm going to go with D. Okay, final yeah. answer, that's Catherine Hepburn. Answer. That's my final answer. That's the right answer. Ah. What a thousand dollars. Doing pretty good here. We've got two lifelines left. We're going for two thousand dollars, ten away from a million. Here it is. Who was the youngest man to be nominated for an Academy Award for directing? Orson Welles, John Singleton, Tony Richardson, William Friedkin. Hmm. Two lifelines left, right? Yeah. 50-50 and phone a friend. I've got a suspicion about one of these answers. And I'm going to go with my hunch. I don't want to burn a lifeline, another lifeline so early. Someone's got to win some money on the show, right? Yeah, be nice. <sighs> Please let it be B, John Singleton. John Singleton. Youngest, uh, nothing to lose here, incidentally. You've got the $1,000. That's All what right. I figured. John Singleton, final answer? Yes. Right again! Yes! <laughs> Tom Duffy, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, in the hot seat right now. And incidentally, when I say best actor or best actress, um, they're popular names for the Academy's uh, acting awards, as you know. But the formal category names are best performance by an actor in a leading role and actress in a leading role as well, just so that you understand that. All right, Tom, so you're doing pretty well here, going for $4,000, nine away from a million. What would you do with this money? <clears throat> if I win the big big jackpot here um, first first thing I take uh, take my family back in San Diego on a trip to Ireland and visit the homeland don't tell me you're Irish oh yeah Duffy <laughs> just kidding okay it's my Italian name uh-huh <laughs> so you take them back there that's and right and you got a wedding and a honeymoon coming up and as well they can be very expensive as I'm sure you know you're gonna go back to the campus where you met the Lehigh campus and and uh, get married there huh that's where I proposed, that's where we met, and that's where we're getting... And when is this going to happen, Kerry? September 30th, six yes. months away. Got the date all set. All right, well, good luck. Thank Let's you. hope you win a few more bucks, all right? Great. Going for 4000 right now, nine away from a million. Let's play! <laughs> Here it is now for $4,000. The film Clockwork Orange opens at a bar that primarily serves what? Milk. Oxygen, water, blood. This is a very violent movie. That's that I've never seen incidentally, so probably too too uh, freaky for my sensibilities here. <sighs> Clockwork Orange. I have. I have a lifeline that's a pretty good Kubrick fan. No, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna guess here. Are you? I've never seen this, but I think I've heard, read something about it. I believe that the bar serves milk. A. Violent film with a bar serving milk. A. Final answer. He says yes. My final answer. My gosh, they served milk. The Corova Milk Bar. That's where the movie opens, just like the book. Hey, you won 4000 Still have two lifelines intact. Going for $8,000. Anyway, from a million, here it is. 
Which of the following Best Picture nominees was not based on an autobiographical book or diary? Awakening. The Last Emperor. Dog Day Afternoon. Sergeant York. Not based on an autobiographical book or diary. This is another tough one. I can eliminate a couple, but sometimes, if you know, that's not even helpful with a... Sometimes if you talk it out and you got 50-50 okay. and you got to phone a friend, maybe you can narrow it down. All right, let's talk it out. I don't think the answer is D, because I read somewhere that Sergeant York himself handpicked uh, Gary Cooper, I believe, uh, to play himself. So that leads me to believe that there, that he wrote a book, an autobiography. So I don't think it's that, and I also don't think it's A. Awakening. I think that's about a, a true story uh, about a real doctor. So B and C. Okay, well, I'm not, I'm not even sure about those, so why don't you give me, uh, let's eliminate two of these wrong answers and see what I can do with that. 50-50, okay, fine. Computer, take away two of the wrong answers. So I'm leaving one wrong answer and the correct one, please. Well, now, there you are. Dog Day Afternoon, Sergeant York. Again, I haven't seen either of these movies, but I'm familiar with them. Mm -hmm. And from what I know about the plot of Dog Day Afternoon, I don't think that it's likely, and given what I said before about Sergeant York, I'm definitely leaning that direction, so why don't we take C, Dog Day Afternoon, it's not, right, Dog not Day Afternoon, not based on a uh, book or diary, an autobiographical book or diary, right, final, it's my final answer, just won $8,000, And you're two away from $32,000, which you get to keep, regardless of how high you go. All right, so here you are. You've won $8,000, going for $16,000, and seven away from uh, a million, and still can phone a friend. Here it is, for $16,000. Which of the following has not caused the Academy Awards to be postponed for a day or more? Has not caused the awards to be postponed. Blood. Assassination. Assassination attempt. Earthquake. If I, <laughs> if I recall correctly, um, it has been postponed exactly three times. Earthquake seems likely to have postponed it. Assassination. Assassination attempt. I think um, when Reagan was, was shot, that caused one of the postponements, so that eliminates C. I think one of the assassinations in the 60s also postponed either one of the Kennedys or maybe it was even uh, Martin Luther King. And the other one was a, a while ago, like in the 30s, I think. I think it's not, I'm going to go with D, Earthquake has never caused the Academy Awards to be postponed. D, Earthquake, final answer. It's my final answer. This guy's on fire, he just won 16 He's going for $32,000, one lifeline left. We'll be right back.
tough to go over those uh, answers for the last question. You know, in 1938, floods for one week postponed the Academy Awards in Los Angeles. In 1968, Martin Luther King's assassination. And then in 1981, the assassination attempt on President Reagan. So those were the uh, three events that uh, postponed the Academy Awards. I, I think these questions are, are tough, aren't they? I mean, you've yeah, really got to know your movies and your movie trivia. So, uh, Tom, uh, you're celebrating a birthday this week, or did it uh, happen already? Uh, just recently, I did. Uh -huh. Turned 26. That's right, the ripe old age, 26. <laughs> I give up my computer for that. <laughs> Do you have a picture of a cake or something? I, I sure did. There was a special cake made for me, uh, knowing ahead of time that I was going to appear on the show. And if uh, we can zoom in on here, there's a likeness of myself on there, as well as you. And we're facing off. <laughs> Let me see that. Okay. We're facing off in the hot seat. Why do I look so angry? <laughs> I'm happy you're here. <laughs> Cute. All right. Well, this will be a nice birthday uh, gift for yourself. You're going for $32,000, an important area. You get there, and it's, uh, it's going to be for you no matter what happens here. $32,000 coming up next. Here it is. Let's play. <laughs> of the following films featured an acting performance by current U.S. Senator Fred Thompson. Curly Sue, Crimson Tide, Home Alone 2, Absolute Power. You just, I don't have the first clue as to which one of these movies it could be. Well, we still have one lifeline left. Oh yes, and we're gonna use it. I'm going to call my shoot. All right, um, I'm going to call my roommate. Your Mike. roommate? Big movie fan? Pretty big. All right, we'll get Mike on the line. AT and T, please help us out. Hello. Hello, Mike. Yes. Yeah, Regent Philbin here, calling from New York. How are you? What's up? I hope you're as smart as you are funny. Listen, I'm here with Tom. Listen to the scenario here. Okay. He's won 16,000. If he gets to 32, you know, he gets to keep that. All right? Yes, sir. Very important question here. Audience is very tense. All the pressure is on you. Okay. Your what's up? <laughs> okay, Regis. All right. He's going to read you the question, the four possible answers. One of them is the right answer. Going to start right now. The next point you hear is Tom's. 30 seconds, Tom. Starting right now. Hey Mike, which of the following films featured an acting performance by current U.S. Senator Fred Thompson? Curly Sue, Crimson Tide, Home Alone 2, or Absolute Power? Well, Fred Thompson played Gopher on The Love Boat. Okay. Um, I don't know if that helps you any at all. Um, if I was going to be forced to guess, I would probably say Curly Sue, but I would probably say I'm only about... 15% sure on that. Did he say 15% sure? Or 15? Yeah. Hmm. There's one other option you got here, and that is, of course, you can take the $16,000 and go have a wonderful wedding and take the folks to Ireland, too. Or we can go for 32000 and stay in the game and leave with that, whatever happens. I didn't even know that he was Gopher, so... Uh, Gopher, what would Gopher have played in? Wouldn't be Home Alone 2. Um, absolute Power was with, what, Clint Eastwood? Crimson Tide. I doubt, I've seen Crimson Tide, I doubt he was in that. Curly Sue I have not seen. So, uh, 
I really wanted to get to 32 Regis, but... Sure. Nobody blames you one bit, Tom. $16,000. Well, the right answer was Curly Sue. Curly Sue, Fred Thompson. All right, my man. Thank you hey. very much for coming and being with us. It's great to meet you, Tom. Have a good one. Good one. Good one. Well, that sound means we're out of time for tonight. And what a difference a day makes. Tonight, our contestants really struggled. Struggled, they almost killed themselves. Well, nobody said it was going to be easy, did they? Now, make sure you watch the Academy Awards on Sunday night right here on ABC and join us Tuesday night with Jason uh, Sterneman, who is our rollover contestant from yesterday's show. And joining him will be Karen Kloot, Joe Stradowski, Scott Lepp, Dean Baker, Bill Gassier, Gita Kennedy. and Bob Kamala. To qualify to become a contestant for our April show, pick up a touchstone phone between the hours of 6 p.m. and 2 a.m. Eastern Time and call 1-800-433-8321. A limit of one call per person each contest day. Phone lines close at 2 a.m. Eastern Time on March 31st. We'll see you back here Tuesday night, everybody, at 8 o'clock. 7 Central Time. Stay tuned now for a special one-hour premiere of Making the Band. It's next here on ABC. From New York, everybody, good night. For all the excitement surrounding Sunday's big event, log on now to the Academy's official website, Oscar.com. Monday, an ABC original motion picture. The only thing more fascinating than Audrey Hepburn's legend is her life. TV Guide raves Jennifer Love Hewitt is totally Audrey. Time Magazine agrees, saying, Hewitt has it all and charm to boot. The Audrey Hepburn Story, ABC, Monday.